So, uh, today uh, we have this interim uh, chapter, so that's why there will be no test about that one, because this is uh, practically completely technical. So, uh, so we have to talk about correlation a lot. So, we have to talk about um, classical correlation, we have to talk about uh, uh, copula approach, we have to talk about the dynamic conditional correlation, we have to talk about uh, market networks, so, so many things. At the end of the day, uh, it will give us uh, a probability of default uh, and the distribution of n dimensional distribution of probability of default uh, by taking all the individual uh, data points. So it will have many uh, practical applications and also next week uh, when we are talking about uh, value at risk and expected shortfall uh, that week will be also based on uh, these things and also when we will talk about uh, the um, credit defaults webs later on uh, it will be also based on this uh, chapter so practically today there will be a lot of equations uh, but uh, also i will try uh, to show you as many uh, practical applications in MATLAB as possible. So, yeah. So, this is chapter 11. So, we are already uh, reaching the 258th page if we are finishing uh, this one. So, we are rolling ahead. And uh, if you are starting with the early part of the, uh, or remembering the early part of the lecture and this semester, then uh, we can remember that, okay, if we have uh, some prices, then uh, we have changes in the prices. At the end of the day, if you are compressing down uh, all the changes on daily or weekly basis, we will get uh, the histogram of uh, the changes or the yeah, histogram of the changes. So practically, this is looking like as a really primitive version for a probability distribution because uh, for density function. Because at the end of the day, the density function will be more sophisticated. Right now, it just contains the number of uh, changes at these levels, uh, not, not the probability of uh, this kind of changes. But at the end of the day, we can realize that, okay, uh, the shape will be similar, so if we have some extreme jumps, then still it will have an influence on the tails of the distribution. Also, the thickness of the body will be represented by the volatility uh, of this asset. And what makes this special today that we have not just one asset, uh, asset I, but also we have the asset J, because it's uh, also moving in its own course. So, practically now we have a three-dimensional issue, not just uh, a two-dimensional problem. And since uh, the distance between them can change as well, that's why we can talk about correlation. So, so we can imagine that, okay, for the I's asset, we can say that, okay, let's calculate uh, the standard deviation. Practically, the standard deviation is that how is this deviating from the expected value? Uh, the same thing is valid for the J's. Uh, and practically, if we would like to create any kind of connection between them, then we have to imagine that, okay, this is the expected value for uh, the J. This is expected va uh, value for the I. So what is... And so how they are deviating uh, from their expected values and as a joint uh, function. And, uh, and after that, just we have to say that, okay, what is the probability here and there? So at the end of the day, if we are combining all of them together, then we have this variance-covariance matrix, which is estimated usually by the models. So you can remember on international financial management when we were analyzing correlation between assets, uh, Dynamic conditional correlation always provided this uh, variance-covariance matrices for each days or for each weeks uh, when the data was generated. If this is not time-variant, 
Uh, so it's an unconditional structure, then this is the classical uh, variance covariance matrix, what you learn at corporate finance uh, classes. That we are taking all the data set and after that compressing down everything. Just the problem will be that uh, this data point here has the same uh, importance like the last or, or uh, really close uh, data points as well. And, uh, and obviously we should have, we should use some weights uh, to deal with this one. So that's why the book uh, shows us the uh, exponential moving average uh, approach when past data is inflated, uh, sorry, deflated uh, with uh, a lambda coefficient. And uh, another approach is when we are not doing this uh, issues or, or approach when we are just using dynamic conditional correlation and in this case we have data for each day and we don't have to deal with uh, rolling windows for uh, correlation calculations. Okay and this is the correlation so we can we need the variance uh, sorry we need standard deviations and we need the covariance to estimate this one. Yeah and the next thing is that um, correlation versus dependence. So this is the next uh, section in the book. So we have statistically independent variables. It's always uh, prescribed. But what is really important for us that, OK, but uh, they can be conditional for each other. So uh, obviously, if, if we are talking about interest rates, if uh, the five year uh, long interest rate increases, it will have some kind of influence on the one year long and also on the 10 year long uh, interest rates as well. So the probability distribution will be not independent. So this is perfect independence is not working at all. So sooner or later, there will be some kind of condition what is happening here and there. And uh, and the next thing, or limiting factor for correlation, that it can measure only a uh, linear dependence. So, so there can be uh, nonlinear relationships when, where we can see that, yeah, in the case of the extreme values, we can have some kind of relationship, but not otherwise it's, it's poor around the expected value. But, but here at the tails, we can see that now it's, it shows us something. Uh, or I have no idea how can I say uh, or tell a practical example for that one, but okay, so that we can see that if this is not a linear line, but something uh, curvy or, or something which is going backwards, then it can be an issue. Okay, so how can we monitor this one? And uh, Practically, the book describes what I was trying to do uh, with graphical approaches. So we can say that, yeah, covariance between the assets and variances, but this is not an elegant approach because this is all squares and this should supposed to be uh, standard deviations. So there sh should be a huge square root. And okay. So the ancient approach was, uh, um, practically it was published in uh, the early 90s, maybe in 92 or 94, I don't remember, but it was published by Goldman Sachs uh, to use exponentially weighted moving average models uh, for, uh, for any kind of time variant procedure. So one time variant procedure was uh, the correlation estimation. And they were saying that, OK, let's take this lambda coefficient. And uh, for daily data set, this lambda is 0 0.94. Uh, for monthly data, it's 0 0.97. And practically, we have to take or put it on the power of the t. Uh, and, uh, and otherwise, we can see that not, not just for the covariance, but also for the um, variances, we have to do the uh, same thing. And uh, and after that, we, we get this. My question was, at the beginning, when I was a PhD student, that why this lambda? 
And even if we are checking the Chai book, which is really, really precise, uh, mathematically precise description for all the underlying models, uh, as a footnote, he, or maybe she, I don't know. <laughs> so the author was saying that uh, this was used and this was published by Goldman Sachs because that was the best fitting scenario and uh, yes. <laughs> so, so since then, if uh, any kind of exponential smoothing is coming up, people are using lambda. Not just in this case. Now I think this can be assumed to be outdated because uh, Engel had this uh, publication here uh, in 2002, at the same year when he got the Nobel Prize for the entire gauge modeling. And practically what he did there, that let's take the gauge model, which just uh, assumes that current volatility is uh, determined by past volatilities and also by some random noises. And also we can remember that, okay, but past volatility uh, has a high importance. So it's usually 0.8, 0.9 is the uh, value of the beta. And in the case of alpha, we can say that it's usually 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So, so mostly the development of volatility is determined partially by past volatility. So information is remaining. So it's like an autoregressive uh, moving average process. Just in this case, the autoregression is happening at the level of uh, the volatility, not at the level of the returns. So uh, that's why it's special. And also what matters here, that what kind of data generating process is uh, happening here, because uh, this can come from normal distribution, this can come from elsewhere. But if we are generalizing it towards, so practically, this is dynamic conditional correlation, but this is a dynamic conditional variance covariance matrix, what is generated at the end of the day. So, so that's why it can be misleading, because Correlation can be just one application. So we can calculate uh, CAP and betas or, or other things if we are uh, calibrating this in a nice way. But uh, what is missing in the book? That uh, correlation will... So it's always limited uh, to normal distribution. Because if you are using non-normal distribution for the underlying data, it's practically described also by the Chai book, uh, then it will be not fluctuating between uh, minus one and plus one. So if it's not normal distributed, it can be between uh, negative infinity and positive infinity. So we have no idea where it's limited. And this is a great problem because uh, the reason why we are always using uh, covariance, because covariance is always fluctuating between minus uh, infinity and plus infinity, and that's why we are dividing it with uh, standard deviations with the multiplication of the standard deviation uh, to order them between these uh, ranges. So, yeah, because under normal distribution, uh, standard deviation can be described with a finite number. If it's not normal distribution, it can be defined by a function. And it's, it's, this is the thing when people are sometimes skipping. <laughs> so, so this is also an added value of the gauge models because in this case we can circumvent this thing because we can say that okay, this guy is represent or uh, responsible for the non-normal distribution, and uh, and if we can eliminate all these uh, fat tail things uh, by fitting the gauge model in it, then at the end of the day the we will get some data which is normal distributed, and after that we can use it for co uh, correlation calculations. So, uh, Engel and uh, Kevin Shepard, who developed the um, MFA toolbox for MATLAB, uh, they have a common paper and practically they did this. So, and also in my dissertation I did the same thing, that first we have to remove uh, heteroscedasticity and practically <laughs> also the non-normal distribution from the data, and, and after that we are allowed to fit this is Usually people are not doing it, so they are fitting immediately the DCC on that one, but uh, in this case the DCC must assume that this is normal distributed. So you are not able to 
set in other alternate distributions because the correlation would be uh, going haywire. So let's check this one before moving on. Okay. We have six weeks, I think. Yeah. Why am I here? At this folder. And of course, we would like to have some nice data set, so first of all, let's download something from from the writers because we need practical data. And let's see. SMP 500. What? Yes. Okay, and then let's add some companies like Boeing. Lockheed Martin, Virgin Orbit. They went to default this weekend, so let's <laughs> let's say goodbye to them. And Rocket Lab. Airbus hmm. What else? Palace is on the stock market or not? Oh, it's on the stock market. Cool. Okay, then Thales. And then, 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 Shafran. Maybe I've ever Yes. Okay, so we have some of the best space companies and then we need a weekly data set because this is when my trick will work later on and let's have data from the last Three years. Okay, this is more than 150 data points, so it's supposed to be enough. Let me kind of analyze this. So, in case of correlation, it would be quite boring uh, to see, but let's check. Before we are doing anything, then we should <laughs> calculate the returns. So that equals diff log data. I almost loaded in this. Oh, 
keresési data points, and after that. So this is the covariance variance matrix at the end of the day, and if we need any kind of uh, correlation, then it would be like that. C. Uh, obviously, we need the four cycle for that one. So I equals one to learn. I think that this is the laziest solution. So so we have to divide the correlation in the main. We can do it this faster. Because if we are remembering the first class in this semester, oh, I skipped that part. Okay, then we don't remember on the first class of the semester. So. I, I, oh, uh, yeah, because we have to deal with the upper triangle. Do we want to do this? Yeah. No. Let's let's check it only for the first variable because I don't want to uh, spend. much time with this one so okay and also we need the covariance so this is the upper triangle and after that from the main diagonal we need one one and two two and uh, also we need the square root of them so s two at the And after that, we could write a four cycle for that one. Just now, oh, here we have the correlation. Okay, so this is the boring correlation because this is not changing in time. This is compressing the whole data point uh, in or the whole data or so time series into one data point, and it also doesn't care about that one when the data was generated in the past. Uh, so it's a old data or a young one. So that's why we can have the EVMA. The exponential moving average and EVMA should be located not here. Uh, maybe it's an OCSD. Uh, I know that he had EVMA approach because I remember from his lecture notes. Oh, we can build it up on our own if we want this. I about it last time as well. Hmm. 
Okay. So it's not in here. Then let's see that. Ah. No. Oh, come on. Then we don't care about that as well, because... <laughs> I know, I remember that there was... Okay, we can, we can generate it as well, just... Uh, okay. <sighs> Let's do it. No, we don't want to do it. Okay, so... Because at the end of the day, we can have the DCC dodge. So that's why I'm not so motivated. Uh, and uh, what matters a lot, that in the past, so before the DCC was published and invented, uh, people were using the back gauge. Uh, it was developed by four different people, so that's why it's back. And uh, uh, it, this is a really long running process. So, so practically when we were using this at uh, the finance master students, I had to sit there for five minutes until it was able to finish. So it's quite useless. But otherwise, if we have the DCC dodge, which lives in the LFE toolbox, So practically the DCC is quite short, and uh, if we are checking the description, uh, it doesn't have so many switches. So uh, we can have the data input, and after that uh, we can uh, define um, ADCC model, which is practically like uh, the GGR gauge. So what is happening if there is an asymmetric shock uh, coming from the decrease or increase of the underlying data set and also we can calibrate it as a GGR gauge model or we can calibrate it as a gauge model and uh, even we can set it to be on squares or on one. It's always on squares and uh, and after that, there is this three-stage or two-stage method. I never, I was never able to see that someone was used different approaches. So let's keep it this way. And uh, and the rest is also we are we are not uh, changing them. correlation save. Yeah. So practically we have to say that okay we have to run yeah we have to estimate it first. And as you can see it runs immediately so we don't have to wait for five minutes like at the case of the back gauge. Uh, what we need to calibrate here as well, yeah, so this is what I mentioned already, that for each day, or sorry, for each week, we have its own uh, variance-covariance matrix. So it provides the same thing like what we are able to see here. Uh, and, uh, and after that, we just, we can say that, okay, let's use the length 
of the data set. So this is a three-dimensional data point. And, uh, and after that, we can just calibrate that. Uh, how the correlation with the first asset is happening. And that's why the first asset is standard and pulls 500. So let's see that how uh, SMP 500 is correlated with the space sector data. So <laughs> oh, ouch. And uh, here is where we can see that the model is not working <laughs> at all. So in many cases, it can happen that the correlation is constant. Uh, so after a fitting time period, so we can see that it's 30 days uh, or 30 weeks, then uh, it, it starts to follow a constant line. That's the boomer for me, so I should increase the frequency. So let's use daily data because weekly is utterly useless. Pim, 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 pim. Thank you. And we have to use only things. 2021 media effect. Mm. So if there is no trade in one market, but the other market has a trade, and that's why synchronization can be problemless. But here you can see that if we are changing uh, or moving from weekly to daily, then it was repairing itself. Uh, but if we are uh, increasing the frequency further and further, so if we would go to high frequency data, then uh, sooner or later it starts <laughs> to lose its value. So, so it would start to fluctuate around something, but this uh, fluctuation will be the correlation, uh, the unconditional correlation. Also here we can see that, yeah, it is, this thing is developing in somewhere, but uh, usually it's the expected value will be really close to the actual correlation of the data. So, so we are not able to say that this is deviating so much. Just we can see that where are the peaks, but, but that's all. Okay, uh, then after we solve this, Uh, so after that, uh, the book says that, okay, this big omega will mesh or will uh, note the correlation. This is not correlation. This is variance-covariance matrix uh, in the future, but you can see that it's changing in time. So it is now this is a time variant thing. And, uh, and after that, uh, they are saying that, okay, but uh, we can uh, create these uh, vectors around it. So it's a transpose vector behind it and, and before of that, and they are multiplying them. And, uh, and this can be, you know, no, at the time it's... So this can be familiar as well, because if we are checking the first week again, Then, where are you, W? Yes. Uh, so the portfolio weights were assumed uh, in a similar way. Uh, if you would like to. Uh, minimize the uh, risk of the portfolio. I, just, I cannot see it. But technically, uh, it would be similar. Just in this case, it's not a transpose, but uh, it's uh, the inversion of the vector. So, yeah, but still the problem is the same that, OK, we have this. Uh, variables which are fluctuating happily on their own, 
But at the end of the day, uh, what matters for us, especially if we have to talk about uh, credit risk in the future, that uh, how these different assets are related to each other. So, because this is matters for us. <laughs> and, uh, and that's why we can say that, okay, until there is one variable, then we can just say that, okay, normal distribution can describe one variable, and uh, we can say that, okay, there is uh, the correlation which can combine them to each other. I think that there is an equation mark which is missing. So, so the correlation will uh, connect them uh, to each other. And, and otherwise, we can say that uh, this is the expected value for the second one. This is the expected value for the first one. Uh, and also, if we know this thing, which is, again, funny because this is standardization. So this is a classical z-score standardization that lets uh, remove the expected value, divide with the standard deviation, and practically after that you are ordering everything to have a zero mean and one uh, uh, variance here. And, and after that, still uh, you can uh, build this up, and after that you can uh, have the v2 variable. And the book says that even the distributions of the variables are not normal, then uh, still it can be a really nice way to specify the correlation structure between variables. Okay, I can believe that. Uh, and after that, the next thing will be that, okay, but uh, in the real life we have just samples. From the data set. So what we, I was able to say that, okay, uh, I need this time frame because this is when we have uh, the <laughs> Virgin Galactic. Uh, sorry, not the Virgin, uh, the Virgin Orbit. The other one is still not went to default. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, so we can pick this uh, sample uh, from the data set and after that uh, we can say that, yeah, but we still can describe the second sample from the first sample. So it yeah, practically doesn't matter that we are talking about the entire data set or samples from that. But uh, still, the book describes a lot of things about that one. Yeah. And ah, sampling will matter later on, sorry, because when we have to test the efficiency of the uh, models next week, then uh, they will use this approach. Just we can imagine that, okay, practically it doesn't matter that how we are uh, we are focusing on the entire data set or, or just a sample from them. Still, uh, the behavior will be uh, similar. Okay. Uh, and after that, this is the generalization for factor model. So if we can say that, yeah, but the second variable sample will be dependent uh, of uh, the first and second asset and also their uh, correlation with each other. So practically we can write up as uh, two different functions and uh, from a mathematical point of view it can be interesting but but after that, if we can describe it with an n-factor model, we can see that, yeah, the description will be just continuing. So why is this special? So what is the difference between the two things? So practically, here we were able to say that, uh, so the correlation is the A here, and they are just moving in the Z too under the square root, so. And after that, nothing is changes, uh, significantly. So, and that's why we are able to reach the idea of copulas. So, if we have the two individual uh, probability distribution, and then we can merge them together, then in this case, we have to add uh, the correlation also. 
to this thing. And, and practically correlation will be uh, a phenomenon when we are walking around the probability joint probability distribution at the same probability levels. Because this is what we'll describe that, okay, this is the correlation at this probability, this is the correlation at this other probability, this is the correlation at this another probability. So this can be a really nice description. <laughs> the problem is that this is the equation for a normal distribution. So even this will start to become ugly, but at least still we can say that, yeah, but correlation is here, correlation is there, and uh, still there is the IXP. So if you are looking from a distance on this uh, still, it will look like as, uh, as a normal distribution, just, just with some extras. So, so practically we need, uh, so first we had this individual distributions, and after that if we can see that what is the percentile for uh, the different data points, uh, then we can reconstruct that what will be the joint distribution value. So this one is quite disgusting here, but uh, but what will be the connection between them will be the correlation. And, uh, and in real life, people are using it backwards. So uh, you are not uh, computing the correlation as a DCC or, or a simple correlation or usual correlation. But uh, in the background, the computer is fitting the uh, copula on the data set. And after that, they are just extracting the uh, correlation values. And practically, you get a row at the end of the day. So just, uh, just the underlying equation is completely different from the standard array or the DCC or other, other approaches. Practically, in this case, you don't have variance covariance matrix, if I'm right. Just, just the correlation. So that can be a major difference. So if you have this ugly V1 or and the other disgusting V2 individual probability distribution, then we can put them in a nicely shaped, it can be normal distributed copula or it can be student or other uh, nicely distributed copulas because uh, the ugliness will be measured or, or managed by the correlation between them. But again, a problem that uh, the correlation will be assumed to be constant. So what we are able to lose that, uh, yeah, now uh, it doesn't matter that what is the underlying distribution, uh, or sorry, this is what we were able to gain, but what we can lose, again, that the uh, time variance of this entire structure here. So, yes. Okay, so if someone is interested how a student T copula looks like, so that was the friendly normal distribution copula with all the different input variables and their, and their distributions. Uh, and uh, this is the big one. <laughs> so Things which will not come back uh, at the test or exams, you don't have to write it up because it was taking a lot of time and this bracket is missing. No, this bracket is this huge bracket, so okay, it's not missing, just enormous. And uh, and uh, you have to incorporate a lot of things into that one. Uh, yeah, so how can we do this? In this case, it's quite simple because we have dedicated copula functions. So we can define that what kind of copula do we want to uh, fit on the data, and after that, uh, 
we can just take the row, row of the data. So this is the U. Ah, and I have to, I have to show it also, this scatter. This will be also necessary. And also, uh, kernel density is usually used. So instead of using uh, the logarithmic return on the data set, uh, we are Oh, we don't need that one. We just, we just keep it this way. Uh, or maybe not. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Data. First. First. J equal one, two, four, four, eight. Can you do this? Yes. So now we have nice data thingy. So if we would. Excuse me. Yes. I'm really speckles. Sorry. <laughs> Can I still allow the mouse? Because in the PhD room, there is no mouse. Uh, yes. Bring me back into yes. 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 Please. <laughs> Just I don't know that sometimes it's not USB uh, mouse. Okay. Or is this USB mouse? It is okay. USB. Okay. I'll bring back. Okay. No problem. Okay. So. So as you can see, it's uh, dealing with itself. So. So let's check it at least in two dimensions. So, <laughs> so you have to imagine that these two things are merging together in space in two dimensions, and after that they will create this shape of uh, of the distribution. So, yeah. And after we did this uh, kernel density. Then it will be even so I have to check this one because yeah, these are returns. Okay, so this is not data, this is that. Because, because otherwise the histogram was so disgusting. Now it's better. And, and also we can see that it has some kind of direction. But uh, matters in the case of the kernel density. Yeah. I have to rerun this one because it's, now it's shorter because of using returns. That... Uh, you know it's 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 flatter, but but uh, we can see that this is going somewhere. So it's it's much more linear-ish like. Yeah. Okay, and. Uh, And after that, we can just. Can I say scatter list for the enterer U? I think yes. 
Okay. Okay, and after that we can have Gaussian U and uh, as you can see this is a correlation matrix. So in the main diagonal we have a correlation with itself and after that with each other. So Uh, this is what we had. So let's go back to here. And this is where we can see that yeah, some asset is fluctuating around 6. There is also something, uh, sorry, this one is fluctuating around 6 and there is also the second one, which is uh, also doing the same thing. So, so practically they are uh, estimating each other. And uh, what would be nice uh, to create a time-variant copula fit? Just the problem is that still you need a window for that one. And in this case, you are not able to use any kind of exponential smoothing. Here, so so you are not able to deal with the expiry date of past information or or the age of information because you are talking about the whole uh, fitting data. The second thing that you need a lot of data points. So, uh, for example, you are not able to fit uh, weekly copula, weekly data points uh, for a quarter of years inside the copula because it will be not enough. Uh, that was my main problem several years ago when when we had this idea that oh let's use copulas to estimate correlations and and we have to abandon this idea for data management point, uh, issues because okay but uh, we can do this on daily data set just after that the conversion for quarterly data it would require so much effort so we abandoned the idea but yeah <clears throat> so this row can be estimated this way as well. And uh, okay, this uh, equation is disgusting, but in the real life, what happens that, let's go back to MATLAB and we can say that. Oh, come on. Where is the list? Yeah, because the Gumbel, it's an extreme value. But... Okay, so they are not listing uh, the different... So... Okay, now it requires some time for uh, fitting, but otherwise it's, it has quite a similar yes, uh, quite a similar result. Just now we can see that, okay, this correlation is a bit bigger. But still it starts with 6, just now it's 2. This one is also a bit bigger. So it provides slightly changes. And uh, okay, this one is smaller. So as it tries to deal with the fattiness of the data. And we also know that if we are moving towards higher frequencies in the data set, uh, fat tailness will be more and more prominent. Because uh, we are providing um, opportunity for uh, more extreme movement, so it's not smoothed out by the lower uh, frequencies. So, so that's why if you would like to operate with daily data set, then uh, student D distribution is way superior. If we have something like uh, monthly data or quarterly data, then the Gaussian would be perfect. So in this case, it depends on the portfolio and, uh, and the trade strategy. That's what are we doing here. And before moving on, I would like to show you, yes, 
I would like to show you another application which is not mentioned by the book, but it can be funny. And this is uh, the spillover of, of shocks. So, shock spillover, so the problem with correlation is that this is not a causal relationship. We should never forget about that one. And, uh, and that's why we don't know where the shock is coming from. But we can circumvent this, because if we are uh, using uh, graphs to describe uh, the underlying uh, situation, then, then practically we can build up uh, We can build up uh, something which uh, will show us that from where the shocks are coming from because of the correlation uh, structure inside the data. So, what we need here is uh, uh, let's let's remove this TCC correlation. Practically, without of these things, uh, it would still operate just. Mm, I would like to keep nice inputs and also okay we need to change the variable means here if we are opening a notepad then Let's just highlight. It's all, there are always tabs between tabulators between the data points. So if we are saying that instead of tabulator, we should have an apostrophe space, another apostrophe, then we can remain, remain them. Go this way. And also we are removing this point from the beginning. And then we have the variable names. And after careful preparation, we can see that how the shocks are propagating. So, so we can see that shocks, uh, because yeah, this is providing all the graph uh, relationships, all the possible relationships between the variables, like it's coming from the uh, nature of correlation. But after that, this is a minimum spanning tree, and uh, practically it uh, highlights the most important nodes uh, and connections. And this is where we can see uh, that how things are happening. So S&P 500 determines that what is happening with the uh, Boeing, yes, with the Boeing, and after that, the Shafran will be affected because Shafran provides engines. Thank you. So they are just selling engine parts and other components for planes. Also, uh, Rocket Lab is completely on its own as a node. Uh, also, we can see here uh, Virgin Orbit, which is also affected individually by the S&P 500, and Lockheed Martin. He's just sitting here. Who is that? Yeah, Thales. Thales uh, is also a European company located in uh, northern Italy, and they are uh, selling many electronic things. So, so like uh, safety system for trains, uh, modules for the International Space Station, cargo holds for uh, cargo. <laughs> Uh, what is this? Not rockets. Yeah, the... Oh, come on. Spacecraft, yes. Yeah. So, cargo spacecraft uh, components where, where you can put the stuff and it will not uh, harm our vacuum. So, so they are many selling many useful things, but they are in the second layer of uh, the 
chain of production, and you can see that practically all the shocks are landing on the top of their heads. So, and also we can see Airbus, uh, and, and it has an influence on Shafran because Shafran is also selling engines for both for Airbus and both for Boeing. So, so that's why this approach can be useful uh, in this way as well. Just it's absolutely not mentioned by the book, but this is the time when I can talk about that. And, and practically we can use also uh, classical correlations to do this. So it doesn't matter that what kind of correlation is uh, used for such trees. Yeah. Uh, okay, tear dependence. I think I, I talked about that one as well. So obviously, uh, extreme values uh, will determine that what kind of distribution do we need here and how can we describe them. And the problem is that the guy who invented uh, copulas, he was really close to get the Nobel Prize for that one. But after that, the subprime crisis arrived, and because uh, the industry was misusing his models. And mostly they were using uh, normal distribution, normal distributed copulas, because at that time it was available and most. Uh, after that, he was blamed for uh, the subprime crisis because, but this thing is completely stupid because he's a mathematician and not the whole financial market. So obviously, if someone is using a model, then they are responsible for that one, not the developer who got maybe nothing for that one, just at least no money or a really small amount of money. But he was not providing license to use this equation because you are not able to put license on equations or, or things like that. So, yeah, so how can we use this uh, for loan portfolio modeling? Uh, so, practically, it was required by Basel II capital requirements that if we have a portfolio of loans, uh, then the probability of default for each year must be kept uh, under 1%. So, on one hand, macroeconomic conditions will uh, bias this uh, situation, and, uh, and also the issue is that uh, they are interlinked to each other. So that's why uh, the entire copula became really popular, because you can describe the common relationship between them. Because if it would be just a financial asset, like a stock, then we solve this already with variance covariance matrices. But if you don't have such a data, uh, then uh, that is really crucial to model somehow. So that's why copulas became highly important. And also, uh, in case of copulas, you can have uh, probabilities, which is missing from variance covariance matrices. So, so that's why we can see that why it became used, why it used by the industry, and also why it was uh, included into Basel II capital requirements. In Basel I, it was not included because the whole copula was not existing at that time in the late uh, 80s. And Basel I was uh, prescribed or introduced. Uh, so practically, here we can see that they are trying to uh, apply a factor model on the whole data set. So they are taking the happy uh, correlations, and after that, they are just multiplying the data uh, with uh, that one. Uh, and the question is, default by time. So def let's define a probability of default uh, as a probability of default by time t. And uh, also from international financial management, you can remember when we were downloading data from Standards and Poor's and their annual report when they were providing sectoral data, probability of default, number of defaults, and also time to default. And in this case, uh, time to default is uh, important for us because how many time do you need until uh, company I defaults itself? And, and sometimes people are also using CDS uh, data, because from CDS also you can estimate or trace back that what is the expectation for uh, time to default 
but uh, but it's highly overestimating. So, for example, for even for sovereign countries, it says that sometimes it's 20 years or things like this. So this is just I, I can't say that this is a sophisticated approach. So this is just okay. This is the available data on the market. So that's why we are tracing it backwards. But it, this is not like all the no data set or or other or Atmanzi estimation that they were taking companies which exactly went to default and companies which uh, were not going to default. And after that, they were uh, highlighting that okay, these variables are relevant. And after that, we can estimate some kind of correlation or some kind of probability. Uh, in the case of CDS. So in the case of CDS, this is not happening. At least here, if we have an SMP-like data set, then we can have uh, this time to default at the level of the sector, but at the level of companies. So, mm. And after that, uh, yeah, this is the nice thing that implicit assumption that all companies will default eventually. <laughs> so, cool. Unconditional cumulative probability distribution will be generated from this kind of data. So, for the time to default, and uh, we can define the uh, probability of default uh, by time t. So, practically, we should add the time variable here. And uh, and after that, this is the end product here. So, so we can see that, yeah, this is the normal distribution. We need this. Also, the probability distribution will be an invert based on an inverted normal distribution. And that's why we can see that this is yeah, generated by that one. And also, this is the probability x. So this will be the one percent. So when we are moving on the vertical uh, axis of the inverted normal distribution, this is the correlation which collects uh, all the data points to each other. And after that, we just have to do this. So this is the worst case default rate. Before moving on. Let's model this one. We see VR. And you can see that, okay, we can define it for different time t's, uh, but uh, there is no t input here. So, this can be an issue, and uh, and let's go back to the Greek letters because we have already the normal distribution there. So we need a CDF normal something something. Let's call this, which variable is not used? Flatline, V, C, D, R. Because it's easier to describe the subcomponents. So now we need the probability distribution. So let's go back again to the Greeks. This one. Uh, I know it was PDF for something like this, just. Oh, 
Okay. So PDF probability of default will be 0 0.05, and this will be added to the square root sqrt correlation. Row hat. Let's say one two. This is the number. Okay, and this is multiplying another probability distribution function, which will be this is the p. So let's, let's define p as a standalone variable. So this is 0 0.01. Probability default will be the other variable from here so in this case it will be easier to calibrate but as you can see you can do it also in Excel so it's it's not rocket science because practically what we have to know is that uh, how can we generate uh, this uh, probability uh, distribution functions and, and the cumulative distribution functions but and then SQRT one minus the row. Okay. No, oh, it doesn't like it. Okay, then. So the worst case default rate is this number. Cool. And yes, and also uh, you can remember that uh, when we were pricing in lease contracts, one of the component, I think, uh, interest rate uh, component uh, four uh, or three was related to the default rate. As well. So this is how this default rate can be uh, modeled or, or described as well. So if we have probability of defaults, then, then we have the variable. So let's see that what is happening if we are increasing this further before. Obviously, this number should increase. Yay, it was increasing. Oh, it's decreasing. Why? Wow. Hmm. Okay. Let's give it a okay. <sighs> Hopefully not the equation is wrong. And, and also there are some added information here. So if they are not correlated, uh, then it means that the probability of default will be the same like the worst case scenario default. So practically this is the difference that are we focusing on the entire sector or just companies as a standalone variable. Uh, Norms in, norms list. Yes. And uh, at the end of the day, if we would like to model both of them, so the default rate, uh, we would like to generalize them and, and have the probability density function of all the defaults. Then this is what we have to do here. <laughs> so, so to have this nice default rate uh, curvy thing here, 
then we have to put this into uh, MATLAB. And now let's see that do we have functions for this. So worst case before trade. Oh yes. and then but also the book is not talking anything about maturity uh, adjustment just they are saying that perhaps let's let's use them and and also they are using norm in the this is this is our equation. This one, and I definitely did not use. Norm CDF is okay, but norm in was supposed to be used, and I did it wrong. And also, what is happening with the correlation here? So the book is saying nothing at all about this part. That uh, how can we define weights and how we can define uh, correlations? This, this part is a bit exotic, let's say. Uh -huh. And this is the other bug. Because we need one minus P. E. And I know that, yeah, it was, it was missing from here, so. Uh, and after that, here is the square root, but here is no square root, and it's supposed to be square root, so minus so let's hit this one again, and what is happening if we are increasing this? Yes, okay. So <laughs> now the Matama. So the book, at least in the case of the examples, it was a bit more simpler than it was uh, acceptable. But uh, in case of seminar questions, we have the following uh, problems. So we have practically two questions. An alpha and the worst case default rate. So the alpha uh, has the following issue. So estimate the correlation between two variables x and epsilon on day n minus 1. So yesterday uh, was 0 0.6. Uh, the correlation suppose further that the estimates of the volatilities of yesterday uh, are 1 and 2 percent respectively. Percentage changes in the two variables yesterday are, uh, so practically returns, uh, are 0.5% and 0. Uh, 2.5%. 
So variance rates and covariance rate for today. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so let's start cutting trees. Should we introduce a different variable? Ah, we don't want to have it. So, minus 1 equals 0.6. Volatility A1 equals. Zero one B zero two R A one equals And for the B, yay. and after that we can say lambda. Put it daily. So what will be variance rates and covariance rate for day N for today? Ah, so this is what so var a var b of a b So first of all, we have to determine that what is the covariance yesterday. So, so that's why uh, we can calculate this one here. And after that, we just have to put back uh, so rearrange the entire equation, just multiplying the correlation with the uh, are you because in this case this is standard deviation, this is not okay, it says volatility, so okay, so this is STD. And then we should calculate the EVMA covariance rate between the two things on day N. So and in this case we just And they are not able to use it. So, uh, because you can see that, okay, lambda is there. Yesterday's covariance is there. But what is missing 
that uh, this component because this is what is showing us that okay but the daily changes between yesterday and today of the asset prices will be uh, this. And uh, so covariance this one and, and the other. So, okay, so lambda, practically lambda on one because this happened yesterday. So just let's to be, let's be clear that. And uh, someone is happy. <laughs> and then one minus this lambda guy. Then we can see that okay now not just yesterday's covariance but also the uh, changes are added okay so this is the right number and after that variances are necessary to estimate it so again we have to do the same smoothing and uh, we should not forget that now we need variance instead of so we need these variables and uh, still the change will be on the squares so we'll Just again, we should not forget about that. We are in the realm of squares. Are you okay? Yes. So we have to do this for B. And then finally we have the EVMA correlation, so well, let's call it EVMA. So this thing divided by, it's so good that it requires a, yeah, Okay, I can understand that why it was necessary. I have to type SQRTs a lot. SQRT B. And now we have this happy poor correlation. Okay, so this is how we can use F marketing. It's uh, necessary then. Next thing, worst case default rate VCDR in T and X. And which is also funny that uh, here in this description there is no time as well. So one year probability of default for each loan is 2%. Uh, I think that I will be lazy and copying this one here. So. Popular correlation parameter, uh, yes, 
This is where my laziness is coming back because so it was zero point one. And then 99.999 worst case one year default rate. So practically I'm just setting it to one. And that's all. Not why. Why are you doing this? Ah. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, because I missed the zero. Yeah. Now it's cool. Okay, so there is no problem with the equation. I was able to do it. I was able to read down numbers and write it well. <laughs> but it's really interesting that, uh, okay, I can understand that there is a difference between 0 0.1 uh, probability of person probability of default and 1% of probability of default. So, yeah. Just it's also funny that uh, if you are aggregating these things up, then this is still a lot of probabilities compared to the individual ones. So what is happening if they start to become serious? Uh, they don't have to be serious. This is what is happening when the AIG went down, that they were underestimating the Correlation, because also we know that the correlation changes in time, so it has a time variant nature, but which cannot be captured by uh, the copula. So, so that's why it can be absolutely dangerous. Okay, so that was all for today. I promise that the next one will be less terrible, because now we start to run more and more applications and, and less. Uh, they will be still nice equations, but but today's one was quite agreeable.